Awesome. So as Mike said, I'm Jason. I work as a technical writer and evangelist at Datadog, where I try to inspire developers and engineers to uh, use the power of metrics and monitoring. Uh, but not so long ago, I was actually a chef, and not the config management type of chef, but a restaurant type of chef. So I've gotten to cook at the James Beard House in a two Michelin starred restaurant. And while working alongside some of the best chefs in the world, I've learned quite a few things about cooking. Uh, but not just about cooking. Surprisingly, I learned a lot about engineering. So I thought I'd take these two passions of mine, smash them together, um, tell you what I learned, and show you just some amazing pictures of food. Um, so thankfully, yes, we are after lunch. I really like to call restaurant cooking an endurance sport with fire and knives. So on the fire side, chefs don't get too attached to pots and pans or stoves. They're all just sort of interchangeable tools. But on the knives side, we get really obsessed by knives. So after making about a million of these sushi tacos and breaking down hundreds of pounds of tuna loins, I decided to buy myself a Japanese carbon steel Yanagi knife. It's a sushi knife dedicated purely to sushi, well known for being razor sharp, but also known for being a little finicky. It requires a little special care and attention. The engineering corollary here is there's a huge benefit. You should be as broad and as tool agnostic as you can. But I think you should also be T-shaped and dive deep into one tool. Have a passion about that. I personally like open source, so I think you should have an open source tool. But open source, like carbon steel knives, can be very powerful, but they require special care and attention, and you need to contribute back. So when I also say that cooking is an endurance sport, like all sports, uh, sports involve working fast and, and being accurate. Now, if you're working quickly with fire and knives, that can be very dangerous. So organization is key. But not just organization, you need to learn to work cleanly. So when I worked at Atelier Crenn, one of the interesting things that they do is right in the middle of preparations, in the middle of the afternoon, they stop. And they scrub the kitchen down, top to bottom. And they do it again right before dinner service and once again at the end of the night. And this may seem excessive compared to most restaurants who only clean once at the end of the night. Uh, but it became very, very obvious that they could only do what they did because they were cleanly and that fueled their organization and allowed them to work at speed. So obviously the engineering corollary here, completely transparent. You can't accumulate tech debt. You really have to stop what you're doing and focus on that, make it a priority. If you expect to operate at speed or produce anything functional. But more than, than tools and techniques, the thing with cooking is you have to keep the end goal in mind and that's to make things that taste delicious. And the only way you can do that is to taste what you're cooking. You have to taste each individual ingredient, each component. You learn to taste your dish as you're cooking it because cooking inherently changes food. What tastes good now won't necessarily taste good later. What tastes good raw may not taste good when it's cooked. There's a corollary here with systems. The systems that we design are complex and they're dynamic. There's a lot of pieces. And just like food, where one ingredient can ruin an entire dish, one bad component can ruin your entire application. So you need to learn to monitor everything. Monitor throughout the building process. Monitor once you deploy. So we're in New York, one of the greatest food cities in the world. And I'm always impressed by the chefs that work here. Particularly, there's a ton of chefs here who stagiaire. And that's the French term for interning for free. They come and they just work for free to learn. And the ones that are getting paid are just getting paid minimum wage. But at the same time, these chefs and these cooks are eating at restaurants that are amazing and that would take months for you and I to get reservations at. And often when they're eating there, they're eating for free. Because while kitchens aren't necessarily empathetic environments, there's an industry-wide empathy. So earlier this year, Datadog, we actually had a fairly public incident. And the amazing crew at PagerDuty actually sent to us some cupcakes, which were quickly devoured and not able to be photographed. <laughs> but this is something that I think we need to share. We talk about empathy in DevOps organization-wide, but whether you call it hug ops or something else, we need to start adopting this industry-wide empathy. Because that industry-wide empathy is how we build up this community. It's how we make our practice better and attract more talent. So those are just a couple of things that I learned. Um, I'm going to leave you with one final thought, one final question that I really want you all to take to heart and ponder deeply. And that question is, where are we going to dinner? <laughs> <laughs>